Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So obviously I'm so excited for today's video because I'm going to be reviewing the all new Natasha Denona all neutral Biba eyeshadow palette. She finally released one of her big eyeshadow palettes and I cannot be more excited. So if you want to hear my review on this palette as well as see a tutorial on the look that I'm wearing, then just keep watching. First of all, I just wanted to say thank you because we hit 10,000 subscribers on my channel. I cannot believe that 10,000 people want to listen to me talk about makeup. That is so beyond what my mind can fathom, so thank you. As a celebration, I did pick up two of these guys, so one of you guys is going to receive this palette in my giveaway. So if you want to be entered to win this palette, just stay tuned till the end of the video and I will tell you the rules and what you have to do. But anyways, let's just get right into the review. So the major facts about this guy, of course, this is the Natasha Denona Biba All Neutral Eyeshadow Palette. It is $129. It is available right now starting today at Sephora.com as well as in stores and then of course NatashaDenona.com though her shipping is so expensive if you order from there. At least for me to my house. <laughs> it does say online at Sephora but that this is an exclusive. It doesn't say anything about whether or not it's limited edition. So I imagine if this sells well it probably will not end up being limited limited edition. So this is described as a must-have multi-use 15 pan palette with the most essential colors. So let's go into the packaging. It is the same hard pan that both the Tropic and Safari palette came in. I love this packaging personally. I find it to be much more sleek, a little bit more compact, and just much more professional if you ask me. It's also less chunky. Uh, so it is this very almost white lilac shade, super super light, and then it has in very subtle letters all neutral and then of course course Natasha Denona Biba palette and then of course on the back you can poke a needle through these little holes and you can take the eyeshadows out if you ever wanted to put them in a separate pan if you're traveling or for whatever reason. I just love that you have that option. You open it up, you have a big giant v You have a very big, giant mirror, and then, of course, you have your 15 eyeshadow shades. And what I do also prefer about this hard packaging is that the names are just right there on the palette. You don't have that dumb sheet of plastic that a lot of her other palettes have that I just find to really get in the way of me just digging into the shades. So this palette is designed to have three different tones of neutrals, so you're supposed to create any type of neutral look that you want. From an everyday, simple eye to a really sexy, smoky eye, you can do it all with this palette. You can also do a really nice bronze look as well. You just can get a whole range of neutral looks basically with this palette. So the top row is the more brown shades in this palette. The shade Coco, which is that third color, that chocolate brown, is actually also in the Tropic palette. It's a good basic color that you want to use for many other looks as well, so I'm not mad that this is repeated in this palette. So this is the more neutral toned browns in the palette. Natasha said she tried to make the transition shades in particular very unique based on their undertones. Uh, the only shade I would really describe as unique is the shade Prairie right here with a little bit more of a yellow undertone. I love shades like that. I don't necessarily know that it is unique, but it's definitely the most unique in that row. So the second row here are going to be your more warm toned neutrals, so you can get a really pretty warm brown eye. I was playing around with this row earlier, and oh my gosh, I got the most gorgeous brown bronze smoky eye using that row. I wish I would have filmed it for you guys because it was a gorgeous look. And then the last row, of course, you have your cool tone neutrals where you are going to get a deep smoky eye or just give you the ability to really deepen up a look. Since they are all neutral for the most part, you can really get them to work with any color inside the palette. Of course, the cool tone is going to be a little bit more difficult to work with the rest of the palette, but the top two rows, for sure, you can definitely mix and match. So the finishes in this palette are majority matte, which I found very interesting. Natasha has such a beautiful shimmer formula. She has flopped on some of her shimmer formulas, but the shimmer formulas that are in here are not a flop. They are her typical amazing, creamy, buttery, shiny, shimmery shades. So if you're scared that you might get some of those shimmers in here, 
you're not you're you're getting the good Natasha shimmers but you are only getting three of them so this is a majority matte eyeshadow palette so 12 of the shades are matte finish and then three are her metallic finish now she has two different types of mattes in this palette eight of them are her powder matte formula which are so beautiful they blend great they are very soft so you are going to get some kickback so just be aware of that and use a light hand and with those powder matte shades you really only need to use a light hand because they are extremely pigmented and extremely blendable now four of these are her cream to powder formula and honestly I have to say I wish she just didn't bother putting this formula in this palette I'm not a big fan of her cream to matte formula it's not that they don't work they blend just fine but the shade you see in the pan is actually much much lighter and less pigmented than what it actually looks like now I'm not saying they don't work I use the shade tone today as my all-over transition shade and it is a beautiful shade it blended out gorgeous but just know it's good the color is going to show up like three to four shades lighter than it actually looks in the pan and at that point I'm just like why even bother just use your matte formula and put a lighter shade in if you're that concerned with it it is mess free I will say that so if you do want a transition color and you don't want the powder all over your face you may like this cream to powder formula also if you have a very heavy hand with makeup you also may like this cream to powder formula in my opinion it just doesn't do it for me I've used a couple of these in my outer corner with a blender brush don't even try it it's not going to show up at all the only way you're really going to get these colors to show up on your eyes is if one you use them as a transition shade or two you apply them with your finger there was one dud shade in this palette and that is the color tar right here I mean you may like it but it shows up like this on my finger and then I can hard do you even see where that is it's right here hardly get it to show up at all and that includes on my eyelid using a finger and in my transition area it is so sheer that it almost matches this light gray here there are some upsides to that formula but I just don't find it necessary Necessary. I would rather just have 12 of her gorgeous powder matte formula that blend beautifully. They're just unnecessary, you know? But anyways, that's just my opinion. They also don't really feel like a regular cream when you rub your finger in it. I mean, they are soft and buttery and they feel different than the matte formula because there's not a lot of kickback, but it just feels like a non-pigmented powder to me, if you ask me. But that's just my two cents. You might like her cream to matte formula, but it's not my favorite. I can get it to work, but if it's not going to show up on the eyes like it looks in the pan, I just... Also, another downside to the palette is I feel like some of the shades are quite similar. I feel like she should have played around a little bit more with depth in the palette or tones. There's just a lot of different shades of brown and I feel like she could have been a little bit more adventurous with the tones. For example, I feel like Seed and Cocoa weren't necessary to have both of those. Freckle and buff i feel like it wasn't necessary to have both of those it wasn't necessary to have tar and sculpture in the same palette pasha ran i just feel like she could have been a little bit more adventurous i know this is a neutral palette but it's natasha denona and i feel like she really can play around with those weird undertones and make it work one thing i did forget to mention there is one cream to matte powder that I actually like and this is the spot shade this is her first time doing her black in that cream to powder formula and it is good I don't know if you notice in the swatch but it is so black and I it blends out so seamlessly so that I had no problems with the pigmentation at all and it blended beautifully I think I prefer this to a normal matte black just because it's a lot easier to work with you don't get that fallout and it just blends out better if you ask me so I will say that black in that cream formula really really good the rest unnecessary <laughs> so that about covers all of the textures that you're going to find in this palette so Natasha on her Instagram she basically said as I stated earlier she wanted this to be for everybody for somebody going to work or somebody who wants a really glam smoky eye it's just a neutrals all you need in one palette now one shade that I do think she's missing is she does have this skin tone cream shade but I think she could have had a lighter one as well I feel as though that would have been a good addition for me because sometimes I do like to put a light cream just all over my eye to clean everything up other than that the other colors that she put in I feel she did a very good job choosing them I really do think of all her eyeshadow palettes this really is an all-in-one neutral eyeshadow palette and if you're into neutrals this is it this is really really good I do wish she put more shimmers in there and 
took back some of those mattes because her shimmers are so amazing. She could have gone and added some beautiful gold, some more champagnes, and just different shadows with different textures and finishes. But other than that, I'm not complaining. <laughs> so I will say, if you are a neutral lover, I think you will like this palette. You just get all different tones of neutrals, so I really like that. And to put it on top of that, if you're a neutral lover and a Natasha Denona lover, I think you are really going to enjoy this palette. Um, a lot of these shades are dupable. I will say that, but I just, I don't have a palette that really has all of the different tones of neutrals in one. So individually, I will say these shades are definitely all dupable for me. However, just a palette that has all of these colors in one is something that I don't have. So if you are looking for that Natasha Denona experience and you want all of these neutrals in one place because her palettes can get a little bit adventurous and you're just an everyday woman, I definitely would say go for this palette. Though I don't love 100% of the eyeshadows in it, all of them are really, really good, if not better. It's just three of those cream to mattes that I think I would have preferred to be replaced with something else, but they still work just fine, and they are beautiful transition colors. You got, you just, you know, I just gotta be picky and say something in my reviews. So if I hadn't made it clear already, I do really like this palette. So I'm gonna go into the tutorial of how I got this look. So I started off with the shade Tone, and I applied that all over my crease. Tone is the cream to powder formula, so as you can see, it applied very light to my eyelid, blended beautifully. I did really like that as a transition shade. And the giant beautiful blending brush I'm using is the Wayne Goss 16. It is perfect. It really picks up those cream shades very well. So I then took the shade Tusk, which is that cream color, and the Isam W25, and I just placed that right over the concealer that was under my eyebrow to set it. I would have preferred the shade to be just a tinge lighter, but that's definitely me being selfish. It worked completely fine. The next shade I went into was Prairie. I had to use that shade. I love those mustardy, yellowy, brown shades. So I used the Wayne Goss 18 brush and I just lightly placed that on the inner and outer corner and then blended that all over my crease. Beautiful shade. So buttery smooth, so pigmented. Adding a little bit more depth, I went in with the shade Coco and I applied that to the inner and outer corners of my eyelid and then once they were blended out I did kind of make a windshield wiper motion to meet the two but I wasn't really too focused on that I really just wanted the depth in my inner and outer corner then I really wanted to add some depth and the real point of me using the shade was to show you how amazing it was so I took the shade spot which is the black shade on a morphe m507 and I really just slowly blended that in my inner and outer corner now I honestly think I would prefer this look without the black but I did want to show you how amazing the black was and how seamlessly it blended. Really, really love this shade. Then I took Shine, which is more of a champagne metallic shade, and I just used my finger to apply that to the lid. Oh my gosh, these shimmers are so buttery, smooth, and so shiny, pretty, gorgeous. <clears throat> when Natasha does it like this, these are one of the best metallics, if not the best metallic in the game. So I just applied that all over my lid with my finger and then I went in with a small bullet brush and I went into Monroe which is an even more ivory metallic shade and I applied that to my inner corner underneath my brow bone and I also kind of patted that right into the center of my lid to really add a gorgeous glow. I went off camera, I did the rest of my face makeup and then I took the Wayne Goss number 20 brush and I started off with Prairie, that yellowy brown and I applied that all over my lower lash line and then I of course went in with Coco and put that right on top and then I finished the rest of my makeup. If you're curious what else I'm wearing, it of course will be linked down below in the description box. So, to round everything together, I'm going to give you my thoughts on this palette. I really, really do like it. If you have a lot of eyeshadow palettes in your collection, I don't think you need it, but if you're a Natasha fan and you're a neutral lover and you've been looking for an all-neutral Natasha palette, I think you're going to like this. This is really, really good quality, and I think it's very, very easy to use. Uh, the formula, it makes it easy for everybody to use and the layout makes it easy for you to create a look. I really just think this is a very user-friendly palette. I really like the colors that she chose. I don't have a palette that has all of these colors in one so this really is a go-to neutral palette. You know if you're tight on money and you have a lot of makeup you don't need this. You can save your money. <laughs> You'll be okay. But it is a nice luxury to have. And I'm more than happy that I picked it up. This is way better than the Tropic palette if you were fearing that. I will say though, if you have the Safari palette and then another palette or two of Natasha that has her shimmers, you could skip out on this palette because the Safari does have very similar neutral tones in it. And then of course, if you have other palettes with her shimmers, 
you don't need just the three shimmers in this but you know what i don't regret buying this i'm really happy with it so overall i would say i give this palette a an eight and a half out of ten taking away points because i want more shimmers i don't want the cream to matte and she could have played around with some more of those undertones in the neutrals. But other than that, I mean, who am I to say Natasha is a queen? So you got it, girl. So let's get into this giveaway now. I just wanted to kind of squeeze it in so that only my really loyal subscribers are really here for it. You know, I just don't want those crazy giveaway hunters. So what you have to do, first of all, you need to be subscribed to me, of course, on my channel here. And you also need to be following me on Instagram as well. My Instagram name is Morgan Turner Makeup. If you follow me there like I feel like I post pretty good pictures on my Instagram and I'm worth following at the very least I also give extra tutorials as well on my Instagram so some of you asked me to create tutorials palettes and a lot of times I actually already have that on my Instagram so you know win-win situation um, and so all you have to do down below is I want you to comment your favorite Natasha Denona palette that has released thus far the one that you love the most and also put your Instagram handle in the comment as well so that I can message you on Instagram that is how the winner is going to find out this contest is going to end a week from today so that is going to be March 22nd I'm so excited about having my first giveaway I wanted to do a Natasha Denona palette for my very first giveaway because I feel like Natasha Denona as a brand has really helped me grow my channel and my audience. I know you guys love Natasha. So why not gift you guys the newest palette because I know a lot of you already have most of the palettes. <laughs> so as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found my review helpful. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. So that means you need to subscribe. And yeah, just thank you. 10K, that's crazy. <laughs> have a great day, guys. Bye.